In a moment on the South Bank show, one of Britain's finest filmmakers, Terence Davis. Hello, at the Cannes Film Festival, Britain was triumphantly represented in the main competition by The Long Day Closes, the new film by Terence Davis. Davis has previously directed only a trilogy of very short films and one quite short feature, Distant Voices, Still Lives, but he's already been acclaimed as one of Britain's most distinctive contemporary filmmakers. Like his earlier work, The Long Day Closes draws on Davis' memories of growing up in Liverpool, the youngest child in a very large, and very violent Catholic working class family. And in a style more European than British, he renders the pleasure and the pain of ordinary experience with a remarkable emotional intensity. In this South Bank show, which includes sections specially written for us by Terence Davis, we trace this extraordinary story where life and art are inextricably linked in Liverpool. here. So many houses, so many names. Names which will mean nothing to you, gentle viewer, but for me are part of the very fabric of my life. Albert Drake, John Hughes, Jimmy Preston, who was considered a real boy and whom I envied. Barbara May, who, wearing a stiff dress with multicolored squares on it, would stand outside Charlie Bennell's shop and sing Danny Boy. Mary Carroll, whose hair I used to pull. All, all are gone. The old familiar faces. Your tea's ready, Kev. OK, Mum. Hiya, Mum. Hiya, Mum. Hey, John, will you get the pantalines on for me? Yeah, OK, Titch. What's up with Mum? The pictures. Where else? Your new film, The Long Day Closes, is partly about a boy discovering the cinema, and that's very important to the film. Can you remember when you discovered the cinema and the impact it had on you? Yes, I can remember it vividly. Um, I'd never been to the cinema at all because I wasn't allowed out because my father was very, very strict and he died in 1953 when I was seven. And my elder sister took me to the Odeon in Liverpool and it was to see Singing in the Rain, and which was such a joy. I mean, the only thing I could remember um, was the, the, the title sequence um, when he does the title number, In the Rain. And I just fell in love with the cinema then, but I fell in love with American cinema. Um, I, I went was then taken to see every musical that was ever made um, from then on, um, simply because my sisters loved American musicals, and of course so did I. And we'd even read the credits. I mean, my sister would say, I see Bud Westmore's done the makeup, and I'd say, yes, isn't that fabulous? You know, as though we knew him. Um, but it was such a joy, because America was the land of magic. It was color. Um, England was very gray. But the real, the real joy was seeing American musicals, and particularly Doris Day. Love? Are you nuts? Some people can't tell when it hits them. <laughs> All you gotta do is say hello to a man, and they've got you whispering in his ear. 
all you gotta do, it seems, is work for him. And they've got you going berserk for him. If there's a guy you merely have a beer with, they've got you setting the wedding date. It seems they've just got to have some dirt to bend your ear with. So before you start, I hear with state. That she was not at all in love, but I was. Why particularly Doris Day? She seemed to embody those, that world of the perfect family. Like, for instance, young at heart. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay